Let's go ahead and get into some ism today. You know, I'm always making analyses, trying to help men see their life today more clearly such that they can chart a course to where they need to be. And as you know, as you can tell from this custom map right here, I've charted many courses. I don't know if you can see the red pins throughout, but I got so many red pins in here. I haven't even had a chance to actually put the pins in everywhere, uh, which is a beautiful thing. That is my blessing. And I earned that. But let's talk about charting courses, right? One young man was saying, Marquette, I'm dealing with a female. I believe she may be using me. I say, ha, that's nothing new. This is what they do. Tell me more. What are you using her for? How about that? Is it a fair exchange? You see, in a capitalist economy, we can expect to have an exchange of values. Sometimes when it's very imbalanced, that's when you use the term, you, you have the phraseology of she's using me when it's imbalanced. So I say, well, what are you using her for? Are you getting nothing out of the deal? He says, well, yeah, I mean, I suppose I am getting something out of the deal. I say, well, tell me more. What do you really want from her in particular? What do you want from a woman in general? What he wants from her in particular is intercourse and some quality intercourse. She's young, good looking, got some good cat. I said, well, what do you want from women in general right now at this stage in your life? He says, just that, just what I'm getting from her. That's what I want. No companionship, nothing else. He's like, nope, no, I don't need any of that. I'm focusing on the hustle right now. I say, ah, say no more. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, what is she getting from you? He says, well, um, she's getting trips, money, dinner, and dates. I say, money? Like, you breaking her off money directly? He's like, no, well, you know, I pay for a lot of stuff when we're together. I say, ah, I understand. You haven't been lowered completely to the level of a trick. I understand. Okay. So I, I created a matrix right here because when you write it down, sometimes it begins to to clarify, maybe look a little bit more ridiculous. Okay, so on her side, she's getting the trips, the money, the dinner, the dates, and the time. On his side, he's getting the sex. I say, well, gee, uh, how much is that coochie worth to you, my boy? How much is it worth? Because uh, the math ain't math, and it doesn't look like things are balancing out quite right. I say, you know what? If she could give you money, would you accept it? He said, yeah, absolutely. I don't think that's going to happen, but absolutely. I say, okay. Who's smarter, you or her? He says, I'm definitely smarter than her. I say, okay, well, if you're smarter than her, how is it that with this man and woman thing you all are engaging in, how is it that she's winning the negotiation? Huh? A negotiation is when you go back and forth and decide who gets what. She's winning. She's getting the dates, the dinner, the money, the trips all covered, and the dates. That also includes your time. Don't forget about that part. Huh? That's a factor, isn't it? So he says, gee, Marco, when you put it like that, you're right. She is she is kind of winning. I say, yeah, and if you're smarter than her, then that wouldn't make very much sense. I tell you, you know, one of my functional measures of intelligence is getting what you want. If you can't get what you want, you're not very smart. You might have an IQ off the scales, but if you're sitting there in poverty, dissatisfied and displeased, uh, you ain't winning. Now, I said, what makes you think you can't get money from this girl? Since you told me the only thing you want from her is sex, because you're focused on getting the bag. Now, if she gave you some money, wouldn't that be inclusive of getting the bag? And that, you know, that increase your your income, wouldn't it? You'd be getting money from your primary uh, work and you'd be getting money from this broad as well, plus the Gucci. I'd say that'd be a victory, wouldn't it? He'd say, yeah, well, but how do you do that? I'd say, aha, now we're asking the right questions in life. We're asking the right questions when we start to think outside of the box, when we say, what will Marquette Devon Burton do in this situation? How could I keep it player in this situation? Where's the back door in this situation? You know, how can I accelerate my success in this situation? How can I do it like I'm doing it for TV? Yes. Now we're getting to the heart of the matter. So I said, you ever heard of the Tinder swindler? He said, yeah, I heard of the Tinder swindler. swindler. I watched it. It was funny. I said, it was funny as hell, wasn't it? It was a beautiful thing. You know, it, it becomes a crime when a man gets money from a woman. It becomes a crime. When a woman is getting money from a man, we call that a marriage. We call that a relationship. And at the worst, we call it a gold digger. But that's not against the law now, is it? That's just life. You just have to deal with that. Unfortunate thing, isn't it? So I said, you know, the Tinder swindler, he got a lot of game, obviously. I tried to break it down such that it would be instructive to you and the gentleman I was talking to. 
So I said, you know, there are a couple of things the Tinder, the Tinder swindler did that you can do. It wasn't magic. And we can't make those typical excuses you hear within the manosphere and the red pill space, neither of which I belong to, sassin or nothing. You know, they make these excuses of, oh, so-and-so's tall and handsome. He's tall, dark, and handsome. Or they'll say, you know, he's rich or whatever the excuse tends to be. It's basically, it's an argument of that person who's speaking, having a deficit. Instead of thinking from their assets, they think from their deficits. They search not for solutions, but for complaints. And in their search, they always find them. If you look for a, a, a complaint or, you know, some, some, something to cry wolf over, you'll always find it. Now, I said the Tinder swindler was not good looking. He's a Jewish fellow, and that particular ethnicity is not well known for having studs, right? It's not like he's like uh, Flavio. He's like a Northern European Viking-looking, tall, strapping man who looks like he could play Thor in the next Marvel movie. No, he was none of the above. Small, not good-looking, bulbous nose, Jewish guy. Yes. So you'd even hear some of the women say, he was not my type. It's not quite my type. It's a little smaller than I'd like. Huh? Which would let you know that the looks, that's not the whole ball game now, is it? Only if you make it the whole ball game. Huh? Yes. Only if you make it the whole ball game is it the whole ball game, which is to say the women don't care that much. Yes. You over here acting like the woman needs you to be six foot two. She might have said that out of her mouth, but is that the reality of the matter? Many things that women say out of their mouth are not true. Huh? You'd be a fool if you believe it. <laughs> Just like I told you on the track, I'd be a fool if I love her, <laughs> which is to say her words no good. Huh? Why would I get wrapped into that? It's just a tool, a strategy. We're going to get into it. First, I'll go ahead and take a pause for the call, see if people really want this good game. Huh? Let's see if they really want this good game. May I acknowledge Austin comes in by cash. I write peace to the saints. Yee! Now, I acknowledge uh, Anthony writes peace to the saints via cash app. Shout out to Vernell writes peace to the saints tuition. Much respect. Shout out to Melvin always supporting you writes to the man with the many names. Peace of saints tuition. Oh, indeed. And let me drop that banner for those of you who may want to support and keep the Google corporation out of our affairs as the Google corporation is a censorship corporation censoring you and I shout out to Mr. Chapman writes. I have a customer who caught his wife sleeping with a coworker. Sleeping with a co-worker, she was creeping. Unfortunate. Now this 40-year-old man lives with his mom. No, Lord, no. Caught his wife cheating, and he is the one that moves out. I could never. These modern males need the ism. Oh, they need a lot more. He might need a hitman. Shout out. He writes Peace of the Saints. Now, yes, this is, uh, this is wild. This is wild and unfortunate. Yes, your wife having intercourse with another man, it's one of those things that makes me want to vomit. And I'll tell you why. It's just biologically not clean in as much as semen can last in the female vagina for five days. So you have a situation whereby you are sticking your fish stick in someone else's tartar sauce. Quite filthy because we know that married couples aren't using condoms. Hell, people do one night stands without condoms. So surely a married couple's not using condoms and she's cheating with another guy, which obviously she's passionate about that. So is she being uh, responsible and respectful? Absolutely not. She's living on the wild side and you are suffering. Oh, my, 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 my. That is an unfortunate, terrible thing. Now, if um, he has kids with her, I don't know if he has kids. I, I'm damn near one. I got to ask myself every now and then, you know, because there are experiences I've never had, like having children. I don't have any children that I know of. That being the case, you know, if I'm with a woman, I'm married to her, I'm taking good care of her, doing my part, as you call it, and I have kids with her and she's unfaithful. Damn, are, are those bad seeds? Ah, I don't know. Like, like, should I just dip on her and the kids? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I might be feeling like that. I might be feeling like that. You maybe you can't say till you have kids, but I'm like, ah, I don't know. Those might be bad seeds. I gotta go. I gotta go. Dip on her. Skirt, skirt. <laughs> you feel me? Anyways, in a righteous society, we'd have proper laws. Women would be very much so disincentivized to cheat because they know if they cheat and they lose their man, they lose their source of income and support and protection. Because I watch a lot of true crime, or at least I listen to it while I'm working. I don't have time to watch it many cases. And often you hear when the women are calling, they're calling to ask for, you know, things that are typical of low class people, you know, domestic disputes, basic arguments, things you really should be able to solve without the government being involved. And if once we take over, we're going to make sure that things are set back right, which 
pretentious to say that the government government's not going to get involved in small matters. Huh? No, the government's not going to get involved in small matters. You want to marry someone and divorce someone? That's your own business. Government doesn't need to be involved in that. Involve your preacher, your pastor, your rabbi. Let them marry you and unmarry you. Government doesn't need to do anything there. That's your personal business. And similarly, if you divorce your husband and you don't have a source of income all of a sudden because he was the breadwinner and you're going to starve to death, well, <laughs> that's the choice you made. That's how it should be. Yes. Some of these lower class women who are dirtbags, they need better. You know, they, they need other things that will help them stay together in that marriage because their heart and their soul isn't getting the job done. Their religion is not getting the job done. Economics, very powerful factor. And that's how you know that our court system and our legal system has been overwhelmed by the female vote. It's been overwhelmed by female lawyers, politicians, and legislators because they've made it such that women have every advantage in the society. And you guys, not not you all, but you know some of these weaklings, they might call themselves red pill in various names, they sit back and what do they do? They complain. And when you say do something, they say, oh, we can't do anything. We can't do anything. We're sick and tired. Coach Pink Pill type fellas, huh? We're going to get into it. May I acknowledge Nick writes tuition. Appreciate you, boss. Came in by cash app. May I also acknowledge Yvonne sends in tuition, writes peace to the saints. Shout out to Brandon. He writes, is it tricky if you fly a woman out? Excuse me. Is it tricking if you fly a woman out? Peace to the saints. Is it tricking? No, not in all cases. I tell you what, one of the challenges with flying a woman out is, you know, she might not take the flight. You heard me? She might miss the flight and waste your money. And that's an unfortunate thing. These women are so ditzy, whimsical, and careless that they'll do it to you. You dig? So if I were you, I just want to recommend how to best do that. And you might say, Mark, what do you recommend doing that in general? No, no. Generally, I do not. I recommend you deal with wealthy women. You hear me? So that's number one. Deal with wealthy women. Best case scenario, right? A saint. What would a saint tell you? Deal with a wealthy woman. What a sinner tell you? Well, I'll tell you how to do the wrong thing the right way, which is as follows. This is how you do the wrong thing the right way. So for example, you have a female, she wants to fly out. There should be some mutuality to it. It shouldn't just be like you want her to come, but she's like, all right, I'll come. No, it shouldn't be like that. Because when it's like that, that's the case when she's probably not going to show up. You dig? So you tell her, hey, um, I will cover the cost of your flight in. No problem. Uh, you just have to pay for the ticket up front. And once you fly and arrive here, then I'll reimburse you. And that way I'm protected in case you flake or no show at the airport. You see, that is wisdom. Yes, you should do that. If for some reason she doesn't have enough money to put up the cost for her flight to you, ah, that should that's a red flag, at least a pink flag, right? You should be concerned. Wow, man, this girl is super broke. And another thing that you should think about is, well, how many confirmations have I received that she actually is going to come out here for me or at least for me to enjoy her in the way that I want to enjoy her. If you can't get the girl on a video call to have a conversation synchronous, you see her face and you know have her invest some time and some effort. If she's not willing to get on a video call a couple of times, if you you know she's not being responsive in in a timely fashion, if she you know ends her conversation by not saying anything, she just falls asleep, wakes up the next day like, oh I forgot I fell asleep. Ah, that might not be the one to fly out. Be be thoughtful and selective. But one thing I can tell you about powerful men is you want what you want, right? There have been times that I've flown across the country several times just to find a specific car that I wanted, right? A rare car. So you want what you want. You go and get what you uh, are interested in. There's, you know, it is what it is. Now, you just flying out random IG thoughts, that's something you should think twice about. You should be concerned. Shout out to Mr. Williams, comes in by Cash App. Writes, Peace of Saints, been busy, but happy to catch some ism. Oh, yes, the ism saves lives. It's always a good thing to hear, and it's a great reminder, and really it helps you push up to the next level, you see. Sometimes we just get comfortable where we're at when there's so many different levels above us, right? You might be getting the vagina, but there's so much more, ladies and saints. Shout out to Gwen, uh, Gwensley, comes in supporting the work. EJ writes, tuition, about to have my supper while getting this ism. What's one thing you're thankful for today, saying peace to the saints, uh, peace and blessings to all the saints? Well, number one, I am thankful that when uh, I had a, experienced a minor challenge, instead of being mean and, and trying to intimidate and bully and being aggressive, I decided first to be pleasant and offer kindness and understanding. And I think generally that is the better way to do things in most situations in the civilized world. So I'm very thankful that I had the presence of mind to do that and to practice it. Everything you would like to be good at must be practiced. And I'm also thankful that I got to engage in a creative process and do some fun things uh, today that um, I'm looking forward to seeing how they turn out, took a bit of a risk. So that's quite nice. Risk is really the spice of life. 
Thank you for asking. I acknowledge Mr. Williams comes right back. He writes, tips to manage multiple women without being serious. I presume you're saying without being serious with either woman. Uh, firstly, it depends on the nature of the women. There are some women that are you know, reasonably easygoing and honest and can deal with being aware that you have another woman and can respect the structure when you let them know, hey, uh, I have two of you. You have one of me, okay? You're monogamous. I'm not monogamous. And that's how we're going to run this. At any point in which you don't like that setup, let me know in advance, love. You don't need to step out and be ashamed. No, no, just let me know. And ah, you can go your own way. There are women who uh, can deal with that. You should be good at being able to assess that in the woman, huh? The ones that can handle the truth. Sometimes you just float it by, see how see how it tastes to them. You hear me? If it tastes good, then feed them a spoonful of truth. If they, uh, pit, uh, ah, bitter, yeah, <laughs> don't give them the truth. She can't handle the truth. So that's step one. Figure out how much truth can she handle. Step two is realize how do you how do they like their outings? How do they like their time spent? Some of them like to be separate but equal. And in fact, I would say most of them like to be separate but equal. Equal. They want to live in their own home, have their own kitchen, and not have to ever really mix or show up together. Other women are more mature and elevated, and they realize the, the vision of a boss, and they respect you as a real king. You hear me? They don't just say king. They really mean that thing. And in as much as that's the case, they're willing to you know share a home. They're willing to do joint outings and go on dates together and spend holidays together. And that's how you want to move accordingly. But I can tell you when in doubt, if they give you that room, go ahead and take that room. So me, when I can bring them together, I like to bring them together. It's a beautiful thing. You heard me? The more the merrier. And let me live like a true pharaoh. You heard me? It shouldn't be that the the, the Chinese emperor, the, the czar of uh, Russia, the Kaiser of Germany, you know, the pharaoh of Egypt, you heard me? Like, treat me like that, baby. That's how I'm living. That's how I'm feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So make them respect it. Huh? Yeah, and I can promise you, whatever you want in this world, it's out there for you. Whatever it is, it is out there for you. I promise you that. Miles writes, Peace of the Saints, saying, I have a question regarding dating frame. Okay, let's get into it. Naturally, I tend to have a more serious and stoic face when dealing with women. That's good. In my experience, that frame works wonders with Latinas and Black women, but with white women, it tends to turn them off a little more. It depends on the white woman. You see, as there are more whites in America than there are of any other uh, racial or ethnic group currently. There is more diversity to be experienced. And so when you're dealing with, uh, say, liberal white women or white women from big cities, uh, I think that they tend to want you to be a bit more feminine and lighthearted. When you're dealing with southern white women, uh, rural white women or white women from the Midwest, they're fine with you being serious, stoic and taciturn. He writes, in my experience, the frame works wonders with Latinas and Blacks, but not with white women. It tends to turn them off a little more. Is this something you've noticed or is it just something else I'm doing wrong? Just curious on the differences between dynamic. Yeah, there you go. So I answer that question before I finish reading it. Very good. Thank you for that question. And also remember, there's a, a level of comfort that you have. You must also respect your comfort levels and what, how you prefer to conduct yourself. Amos comes in supporting the work via PayPal. Truly appreciate it. Much respect. Looks like we're caught up there. Now for the folks who came in by Super Chat. May I uh, acknowledge Saver127, supporting the work. Truly appreciate that. Shout out to Fit John John, writes, peace to the saints. Rivington writes, in traffic, driving around, just paying what I owe. I appreciate that. And may you have a, a peaceful time. Shout out to none of the above, supporting the work as well. I9Bash writes, peace to the saints. We as men must remember that once... Ah, okay, I think there may be a typo there. Uh, vlog, right, supporting the work. I'm looking into an import business. Any suggestions you would recommend? Yes, make sure that you understand the import taxes. Um, that is the import taxes where you're receiving the goods and perhaps the export duty. You know, you want to look into duties and taxes, the place where the goods are exiting and the place where the goods are coming in. And more importantly, you want to look into um, the insurance. This is often an issue. And what I mean is the way your goods are insured in transit from the factory to the uh, port of exit. And then once they're on that, you know, sea freight container, uh, what is the, who's insuring there? And then once it's received at the dock and then received to your, your storefront or wherever you're receiving the goods. So again, to summarize duties and taxes, 
and insurance. Those are the critical pieces that you want to pay attention to. That's what kind of, those are the hidden costs that will challenge your business. And um, I don't know at what level you're looking to engage uh, in business, um, but if you're looking to make a serious go at it, um, you probably are going to want to book a consultation with someone. It doesn't have to be me. It can be anyone who has some experience uh, because you are going to be engaged in a business that has government regulations, that has significant uh, interface with the government. And those are the things that will reduce profit margins. So um, even like small things, for example, and, and I know this from having done a lot of international business, when you have goods, say, sent from China, for example, if they declare the price per piece of a of your goods to say be like four hundred dollars uh, retail or even four hundred dollars of like the actual cost, uh, then your taxes are going to be calculated based on what they've declared the value of the item to be. And so you might strategically ask them to declare the value lower, uh, but know that that's going to also impact your insurance coverage, not the insurance. Yeah, the insurance costs might be the same or lower, but the coverage will be not as good. So these are things to consider. Um, generally, I say, hey, go ahead and get started. But when you're doing a business that is international, uh, there are a lot of considerations in terms of su supply chain and much more. So it's worth really planning this out in detail with someone who knows what they're doing. Uh, wishing you much success. I'd be curious as to what the young lady is importing and exporting. Right, sounds interesting. Shout out to biography supporting the work. Appreciate you. Oh wait, he said following up. Did Joshua reply back via email? You were emailed, and Joshua was cc'd. Is my understanding? I think that's what my assistant did. Let me reach out real quick just to make sure. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure literally while we were on that call, uh, Joshua was emailed and you were on CC'd on that email. So I'm just going to send a photo of your super chat to the team. Get that taken care of for you. Thank you for that. Carrying on. Now, so when you're dealing with a female and she's getting all these things that she wants, she's getting everything that she wants from you. She's getting your emotions, your time, your money. She's making you risk capital, all that good stuff. And all she's giving you in return is intercourse. And you know, the funny thing here, actually, I don't even know if it's funny. It's kind of sad when you really think about it. I was asking this guy about the intercourse, not in a perverse way, but rather saying, is this precisely how you want it when you want it? He's like, no, not quite. He was like, you know, there's sometimes, you know, I want it. And she's like, oh, let's watch a movie first. And I was like, oh, I see. So even like you've paid all this money essentially, right? Let's, let's just add up your contribution, whether it's the dates, the trips, uh, the, the dinners, the time. So you're contributing all these things, right? And let's just say this is your compensation for her vagina. Let's just say it is. So you're giving all these things in exchange for the vagina and you're not even getting the vagina in the way that you want it. It's like going to a restaurant, you order a, a filet mignon and you ask for the filet mignon medium well and they refuse to give it to you medium well. They're like, we'll give you a filet mignon, but we're going to give it to you when we want to give it to you and how we want to give it to you. OK, it doesn't matter what you're paying for. We're going to do it how we want to do it. Oh, uh, that doesn't seem quite right, my dear boy. Seems like you're taking a major loss, and this is a woman who's very selfish. And truth be told, being that every woman has a vagina and you're not even getting it in the way that you want it or with the frequency that you want it, I'm guessing you can find a better deal than this if only you were willing to take the extra time to, to work and, and find that woman. The problem is often that we become complacent or we accept what we have instead of pursuing what we want. Ooh, we accept what we have instead of pursuing what we want. That's number one. So I said, my recommendation, generally speaking, you get a better female. I mean, I'm not saying that she's a main piece. Maybe she's your side piece, but she's not even a good side piece. You heard me? You know, a side piece is going to give it to you how you want it, when you want it. You dig? So, and certainly a main piece should do that. So I said, you should replace her. You should go start looking for something better. That's number one. The number two, in the current dynamic, and remember, I, I don't ever say just get out of the relationship cold turkey. You heard me? Find a replacement. Bring Shorty off the bench. You heard me? And if your bench is empty, then you got to go recruiting. That's just what the game is. 
that being the case, while you're still in the game with Shorty, don't let her slack. You heard me? You know, be a real coach out here. And let's see if we can get her up to standards. So in terms of this Tinder swindler game, you know, there's so much more value you can extract. And I, you know, for the fun and for the F of it and just for your your uh your character let's see if we can squeeze a, a dollar out of the bra let's get clever here so you know with the tender swindler there are a couple of things that he did quite effectively that all men need to be doing especially if you guys are engaging in online dating which like he was which i highly recommend against because in america it's a total scam uh all of the apps especially the the dumb ones like tinder when i say dumb i'm saying they're filled with dumb women with no values uh these have bots and scammers very few women are actually on there and the women that are on there are extraordinarily picky um and delusional so they're only picking the top five percent of males and then they still have the nerve to be unresponsive and things like that because these women are talking to too many guys and just a side note pro tip for all of you uh who may be interested if a woman's vagina doesn't smell like nothing or it doesn't smell good like a good clean vagina should if it smells bad or if there's a stench that means that she's too sexually active she has multiple sexual partners and I say this not having had experience with women with vaginas that don't smell good. So I'm letting you guys know, like, because we did a live session before and some women came on and they're like, Marquette, like, you know, and, I, and they had all these explanations. And I was like, no, I've never experienced this. I, I think you guys are just probably promiscuous. I think that's you, you either have an STD or you're promiscuous. Like, I, I don't know what other explanation there could be. And gentlemen, you should know that this is the fact because a vagina can't be cleaned it cleans itself naturally, which means that over time it's self-cleaning, right? But that's over the span of a week when you're mixing different bodily fluids from different males, there's a stench there. And so you should know if your girl's vagina stinks, it's because she's being promiscuous or she has terrible cleaning habits or not even cleaning the vulva or um, she has an STD. She's sick. She's unhealthy. There's no reason a woman's vagina should smell terrible, right? Uh, so I just want to throw that pro tip out there for you guys, because I, I was just like, I was like, God damn, like, how could that, how is it that I've never experienced that in life? Like, oh, that's why. Because I'm dealing with decent women. These are scallywags. Now, anyways, back to the Tinder Swindler, Tinder Swindler's lessons for you. And, and I think the Tinder Swindler is a hero to, to all men around the world. You dig? He struck a blow back at the beast. Number one advertising he knows how to advertise and the tinder swindler is just highlighting some things that we already know from the pimping you dig and when we say advertising what we're saying is that he's utilizing things that appeal to women to attract women which is to say human beings don't like worms fishermen don't like worms but fish do so when you fish you cast your line with a worm on it and just like the pimping, a real P is not concerned with finery and jewels and cars and all of these things. He's concerned with a whole cold, hard cash, wealth and living life at a high level. But he uses these tools to to impress the woman's mind, huh? to attract the woman, because you know how women think. Because women are comfortable living on a man. When they look at you, they say, well, what do you have? So if I were to live off of you, I could live like you live. Huh? And that is precisely why a pimp knows how to market. That's precisely why the tender swindler knew how to market. And the advertising was to show opulence, to show fine things, to show flights and private jets to show brands. And these are the things that mesmerize the mind of a woman. But let me tell you how dimwitted males get confused on these things. You see, the dimwitted male does not realize, you know, he's out there thinking like a broad. huh? Yeah, he's thinking like a broad. So the dimwitted male is out in the world and he's saying, oh man, that guy's driving in the, the drop top. That guy's in the Maybach. That guy's in the Rolls Royce. That guy's in the convertible. He's like, oh man, this is cool stuff. And he gets sweet swept away with the cars and the jewelry and the clothes, not realizing that those are tools not to attract another man or impress another man, but to grab the broads. Yeah, to grab the broads attention. And a real P, yeah, he enjoys being in the roles. He enjoys being in the Maybach. 
but he's not attached to it. Because remember, a P is a hustler, number one. Hustler, I mean, you know how to get the money. Number two, he's a hustler, a street dude. And a street dude came from the gutter. So you're not attached to these things. You live most of your life without these things. huh? You're not attached to it. You see, it's the dumb, dim-witted mind of an onlooking male. Some of these guys who are broke, impoverished mentally. Some of these guys who are immature, they look and they think the things are important, not realizing that those are mere tools. huh? Just like a a, a handyman goes to work and has a hammer and a saw and a wrench. Those are tools to achieve his goal, to achieve his job. And for a P, these things are tools. The flash, that's the, the glitz and glamour. Those are tools. And I tell you what, there's not a woman on earth uh, who can tell me that she does not, uh, you know, she's not impressed and have me believe it. They're all impressed. I promise you, they're all impressed. And even if they say they're not, they're lying. And I'll tell you how I know for sure. Women often speak of, I want security. These are the terms that they, the intelligent, sophisticated ones use. The dumb ghetto ones, they'll just tell you straight out. They tell you straight out. Oh, I want some Chanel. I want a Chanel bag. I want, I want some jewelry. Buy me this. Buy me that. Or I want to fly, I want to fly with you. I want to go on a trip. Like the broke, dim-witted, low-class ones, they just tell you straight out how they feel what they want. They're simple. The sophisticated ones have euphemism. They have complex language to disguise their gold digging. For example, they'll say things like, I just want security. How much money does it take to be secure? You see, secure means nothing can threaten you. Huh? That sounds like a lot of money. Secure means you don't have any worries. You don't have to be bothered by things. Secure, that got to be a lot of money, love. It does. It does. Because just the other day, a dude told me I needed to have my brakes worked on $6,000. Okay, boom. So I just got hit for $6,000 off rip. That's just at the beginning of the month. Month just started. Boom, hit for $6,000. That's, that's just on the, the car brakes, right? Then you still got to eat. You got to pay bills. I'm sure Shorty want to go out and see a show. I'm sure she might want a gift here and there. It's Christmas as well. So how much money does it cost to be secure such that we don't have to worry at all for anything? I have a feeling that's probably a lot of money, like a lot, a lot of money, right? Because, you know, just in case a medical bill comes up for me or comes up for you, like secure means like all this stuff can be taken care of and we don't have to worry at all. Yes, yeah, secure. That means a lot of money. And here's the worst thing about it. Women often not being those who earn money or earn significant amounts of money, they don't know what anything costs. I remember when we're running St. City Podcast, we had some girls on there and one girl said that she had the bag and she was really proud of herself and that she saved up a lot of money. I said, how much money you saved up? She said, 20,000. I reached in my bag, pulled out 30,000. I said, see, that's not a lot of money. You don't understand money. See, to you, those are savings. To me, that's pocket change. Yeah, I could walk off and forget this bag right here and it, it just is what it is. That's pocket change. Huh? Women don't know anything about money. They know a lot about spending money. For example, you have women who have been in private jets, but they don't know what it costs to charter a private jet. Huh? Huh? You have women who say they want a guy to make six figures, but they don't know six figures, you dummy, includes 100,000 and it also includes 900,000. That's an enormous range, dumb broad. Six figures, 100,000 to 900,000, enormous range. And they don't know what it means. Huh? Yes chick tell me like, oh yeah, you know, I just want a car. I want a car like this and blah, blah, blah. And you know, I was like, well, how much do you think a car like that costs per month? Like, what do you think is the car note on a car like that? I don't know. What, like $800 made me chuckle. I was like, yeah, see, you don't understand money. When you say you want a guy who makes six figures, you don't want a guy who makes six figures. You want a guy who makes at least $10 million a year. I'll tell you why. Like the cars that I have that you've seen me drive, yeah, the car notes on those are multiple thousands of dollars, each one, multiple thousands of dollars. And if you drive cars like that, surely you have a decent house, right? So now we're talking about like $5,000 in mortgage per month, right? So we're talking about $5,000 in mortgage, couple thousand in cars. That's $10,000 a month in expenses, dummy. That's in expenses. That's in bills. So these dumb broads are watching Instagram. They're watching the world out there and they have no conception of what money can get you. 
They say six figures, not realizing that if you have two luxury cars and one decent house, not a mansion, just one decent house and two luxury cars, that's $10,000 a month in bills. You still haven't eaten. You haven't gone on any trips. You haven't gotten any Chanel bags. You've not bought anybody a gift. You've not paid for any medical bills. None of that. So these dumb broads talk about six figures when they really mean multiple millions. Okay. Now, Marquette, why are you elaborating on that? I'll tell you why I'm elaborating on that, because I want you to understand that you don't really want the girl who wants a multi-million dollar lifestyle. You might just want to sleep with her. So how do you sleep with her? You advertise, huh? You advertise. And the great thing about it is it's easy to fool her because she doesn't know what the real deal is anyways. She doesn't live that life or that lifestyle. So she doesn't know what's real about that. You hear me? No, nah, she don't know what's real about that. So you advertise to fool her, huh? Hell, and I help you, you hear me? Yeah, I help you. Shoot, one of the one of my young boys out here wanted to take a picture with the rolls. I was like, bro, absolutely, go ahead, man. Hop in the, hop in the driver's seat. They got to take a picture for you. Man, put this shit on your Tinder, bro. Go ahead, get you a bitch, man. Yeah. And, and when she want to hang out, tell her to come swoop you up. You, you having your car wrapped. Tell her you getting your car wrapped right now. You you spent $8,000 to get you a two-tone wrap on your car. It ain't available right now, bruh. Go ahead. Scam that bitch. She deserves it. Huh? Yeah, man. Advertise. So that's number one. A pimp knows how to advertise. The tender swindler knew how to advertise. He shows her the things that she wants to entice her and bring her in. Now, let me tell you the funny thing about a woman. Love is the cheat code. Love's a cheat code. Woman comes in thinking you were a baller. You weren't a baller. She, baller. she found out you weren't a baller, but in the process, she starts to like you. Guess what? Doesn't matter now. Doesn't matter if you're not a baller. Doesn't matter if you're an average everyday guy or even a broke guy. Doesn't matter anymore. Huh? Yes. They say things that aren't even true, like, like they fool themselves. You got broads who say they're all about the bag, but they dating a guy who ain't got the bag. They got a baby daddy who was broke. Come on now. We're going to get into this today. I acknowledge Elias. He writes, tuition support for the previous few streams. They were extremely valuable, and I got saved to my favorites playlist before I had them finished. Absolutely. And we got uh, a couple more streams that will be going up uh, soon of ones that were taken down. We'll be popping those back up for you. Uh, shout out to uh, Taylor, supporting the work consistently. She writes, thank you for the insight. Where is the best place to book a consultation? It's at T H E S. -E asn.com that's where you can book a consultation or i think you can actually cozycal.com slash i think it's sasn let me see that'll take you straight to my page to book yeah absolutely so that'll take you straight here this will take you straight there boom there you go So that's for those who want to book a consultation. Shout out to Caleb supporting the work via Cash App. May I also acknowledge uh, Joseph supporting. He's very consistent. Shout out to Amani writes, why do intelligent girls only debate and argue? No, it's not just the intelligent ones. It's the ones that think they're intelligent. Maybe that you air quoted that. Yeah, it's the ones that think they are intelligent. You know, sometimes I find that the most intelligent thing to do is to shut up. And certainly many women don't want to do that. One category of women that I stay away from, like the plague, are women who are in law school or who want to be attorneys. Often they overestimate their intelligence, which is why they're going into a field of study and practice that is largely based around the concept of argument. Frankly, I don't like to argue at all. You heard me. I like to get along in peace. And when I'm happiest, I'm silent, okay? Communication, you know, needing to speak means you've resorted to the fact that someone else uh, or rather yielded to the fact that someone else doesn't understand what you need them to understand or what you understand. And you have to explain or communicate or convey. I'm in a state of peace when I'm silent. I feel like everything is well around me. I don't need to influence anything. We generally speak to influence or to share. When I'm at peace, I don't need to share anything. That person has enough. Their cup of full, their cup is full, whether we're talking about their cup of knowledge or whatever else. I'm at peace with, when I'm in silence. And I learned a great deal watching uh, my friend's father uh, because his father was dating a woman I would never date. She is gorgeous, beautiful woman. In fact, beauty runs in her family. She had a sister named, Aunt, named Victoria. They called her Vicky, Auntie Vicky, thicker than a snicker. 
fine as all get out. And I was trying to slide on Auntie Vicky since I was like 11 years old. And I was not trying to hide it. You heard me disrespectful in the family functions, trying to slizz eye. And last time I saw Auntie Vicky, I think I was like 30. And I tried to slide again. You heard me, uh, Auntie Vicky, like 54 right now. I'm still trying to slide. Like, let me complete this mission, Auntie Vicky. Point is this. My partner's um, father was uh, ha had a wife, gorgeous lady, but um, ah, not my cup of tea. She was a, a preacher, a Christian preacher, which in my view, in, in the biblical view, the women are not supposed to be preachers. Uh, I think that's 2 Timothy. Um, and she's a preacher. And also, I just found that she had a lot to say in general and did not bring peace to the home. I remember one time I've referenced this before. I'll never forget it because I was just shocked that my friend could live under such circumstances without being a nervous wreck. We'd come into the house one day. The door had closed. We came from the garage into the house and the door closed and she yells from upstairs, Ryan, quit slamming all them goddamn doors. I don't even know if she said goddamn, but it felt like it. You hear me? It felt like it. And I was just like, bro, like, what's wrong with her? Like, Why would she think you're slamming the door? We just got home. Like, are you angry? Like, why would you be angry? We just got here. No one's done anything. And why is she yelling? If it's a, a noise is the issue, why yell? That just adds to the noise. It's just, it's scary to be here. It's unpleasant. And I noticed the father, when he was around and the wife was around, he just wouldn't say anything ever. And I realized after a while, it's because when you say something to a person like that, you just give them fodder. You give them something to argue about, something to disagree with, something to, to, to out, you know, you say something, she wants to outthink you or outdo you. And so I realized that, ah, this is a personality I should stay away from. The women who seek leadership, the women who want to be lawyers, the women who want to be politicians, they want to be in the spotlight, narcissists, argumentative minds. So yeah, I, I stay clean away from those. Anyways, uh, thank you for uh, that bit of support. Um, and yes, it's, it's not the intelligent ones, it's the ones that think they're intelligent. Those are the very dangerous ones because they're they're busy with the idea that they can outsmart you. So they want to be your leader. They want you to follow them. Yeah, I'd stay away from, I'd just smash them and dash them. Shout out to Mr. Tabit, Rice, Peace of the Saints, truly appreciate it. Yeah, smasher, dasher, prancer, <laughs> vixen. Uh, shout out to Paul T supporting the work as well. Now, number one, advertise. You have to advertise. And let me get down to the basics with this advertising. You know, if you're not advertising on the level of, you know, big cars, big houses, um, big bank rolls, all that good stuff, big brands. You also can advertise in terms of being neat and well-kempt and dressing for success. You see, you know, there's certain ways of dressing that are not success oriented. It's not going to get you that W. And so you should always be clean cut, well-shaved and presentable, well-groomed, clean, sharp. You know, that's an advertisement that you can utilize. Don't become like a woman, but make sure that your hygiene is cared for. Number two, this is really important. The Tinder swindler manipulated these girls based on the girl's interest, which was money. This is actually the same thing that a pimp does. You control the female based on her interest and you making yourself the vehicle, the means through which she achieves her goal. I'll get into it. When you watch the Tinder swindler, and you listen to the dumb British and European bimbos talk about what they felt when they saw his Tinder profile. They say, oh, he enjoys a lifestyle I could only imagine. Limos and private jets and travel around the world, jet setting. I couldn't imagine. It was a totally different lifestyle. I couldn't imagine. But, you know, the subtext is I would like to imagine. I'd like to live it. I'd like to be a part of it. So, of course, they matched. And what did they want? They wanted the lifestyle. They wanted to be a part of that. In the private jets and the limos flying around the world. Shout out to Heels in supporting the work. Much respect and appreciation. And so he became their means to achieving that lifestyle. This is the same thing that a pimp does. You will never have a good hoe unless that hoe wants to go straight to the top. Huh? Yes, because this is a lifestyle of fast money. Yes. So if she doesn't want fast money, if she doesn't want a bunch of money, if she doesn't like shiny things and big rings and all that, she ain't going to be a good hoe. Yes. Yeah. Now, granted, love. Oh, that's a factor. Her, her being interested in you. That's a factor. But she has to want the finer things in life. And you have to tell her, hey, I have them or I've had them and I can surely get them with you and I together. 
You're the means through which she gets those things. Now, the ironic thing that's consistent between a P and the Tinder swindler is in both cases, they were looking, the woman was looking at largely an illusion, not realizing that he's saying, yes, I can get you these things. But in both cases, the woman was actually the true fuel and engine of achieving those things. And in both cases, with the Tinder swindler and a P, in both cases, they were taking the lion's share of all of the profit of all of the fruits of the labor, huh? Yeah, all of the benefit was primarily going to a P, which is radically different than what most men are experiencing. Just like I was talking with you uh, or pointing out earlier that uh, case study wherein the gentleman is giving the chick all these things. And when she gives the vagina, she don't even give it to him how he wants it. I'm like, yeah, bro, like she's getting she's winning that you're losing. Whereas with the P and the tender swindler, the chick says, oh, I want to experience this opulent lifestyle. He's like, yeah, for sure. And guess what? She does get to experience a bit of it. These dumb thoughts did get to go on private jets. Yes, they did get to go on the private jet. But he was always on the private jet. They got to go on the private jet sometimes. Huh? They might have gotten one item, but he was getting designer clothes all the time. Huh? And he used those gifts strategically in the same way that women use their vagina strategically, which is to say this, you meet the woman, if she wants something from you, she doesn't just give you the vagina straight away. She has to make you work for it, earn it, so to speak. huh? And, and then once she starts giving you the vagina, you got to give something in return, right? Give her a date, give her a trip, get her, she gets flued out, whatever the case may be. Same thing with a tender swindler. Uh, he made them uh, give, a, he, he gave them a little gift uh, just to, he, used, he, he was giving to take. He was giving to take. Yes. So he'll give her a little something to show, hey, yeah, I got it. I got the money and I'm willing to spend on you. I care about you. So you give her something. And what happens when someone gives you something? You feel indebted. When someone gives you something, you feel indebted. So he would give them something and they say, oh, you know, he gave me this Chanel bag or he gave me this er these Hermes uh, shoes or whatever. And then he says, okay, you know what? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm over here and my cards are cut off and, you know, the bank thinks it's fraud. You know, I need to fly to Amsterdam and I need to fly private. Of course, I, it wouldn't be anything less than that would be uncivilized. So I need 30,000. Can you wire me 30,000? Now in that lifestyle, 30,000 is really nothing. And in a middle-class person's lifestyle, 30,000 might be all of their savings. <laughs> you hear me? Or plus a loan, right? And so he's like, Hey, just send me 30,000. Now she has a dilemma. She's like, I like this guy. I know he has the money, so he's going to give it back to me. So why not? Why not? I like him. I know he has it to give it back to me. So why not? And she wants to keep playing in the game. She wants to keep participating. And so she has now been put in the position that women usually have us in when we're, when we're simps and losers, which is this. If I don't give him what he wants, he's done with me. And she wants to stay in the game. Why? Because there are few like him. Now, this is the position they usually have you in, right, as a man. Which is to say, you're like, if I don't give her what she wants, she's done with me. No more vagina for me. I'm done. I'm axed. I'm getting ghost. So let me give her what she wants. She doesn't want to go to Cheesecake. She wants to go to Mr. Childs. Let me give her what she wants. Huh? So he's basically flipped the dynamic. And all of these things on the surface of things, it's all, you know, it's all nice and peace and peachy. And there's no overt threat. It's a covert thing, right? Which is he's like, hey. I reached out to you. I asked you for the 30,000 because you're my woman. You're the one I'm dealing with. You're the one I care about. Help me out. And she doesn't want to not be helpful. She likes him. She knows he has the money and she wants to stay in his life and stay in the game. And he used one unique trick, one very unique trick. Women, they, they so desperately clinch onto monogamy, right? They, they have to be your only woman. So when you tell her, hey, I'm relying on you to, to hold me down, oh, he came to me. Even though you're asking for an actual favor, they still have this feeling, ah, he came to me. And they should. And they should. Absolutely. Yeah, I came to you. What's up? And so they go ahead and get it done. And here's the funny thing. Then they get slumped into the dynamic that gamblers get slumped into, huh? which is this. So you, she gave the man the 30,000. He does what he, or who knows what he did, right? He's a swindler. Who knows what he did, but he gets the 30,000. And then she's in that gambler's issue, which is this. You see people, they go and start gambling and say they start with a hundred dollars and they lose $60. And then they're like, oh, well, already lost 60. I might as well keep going so I can get my money back. 
So they have to keep participating in the game, thinking they're going to get their money back. But what happens when you keep participating in that game? You lose more money. So he, you gave him the 30000 and now he's just going to, you know, beat you down inch by inch. You got 15000 I need 10000 I need 5000 for this. Inch by inch. Next thing you know, it's accumulated to $200,000. And here's the funny thing about the broad. She's learned a lesson about herself she didn't even know. She didn't even know she could get her hands on $200,000. Huh? She didn't know that. He taught her that. She still ain't even realized the game. You see, because this is the thing. This is why a, a, a HOE needs a P. You see, because a P just had her put her hands on $200,000. But before he did that to her, if he said, hey, do you have $200,000? She'd be like, no. He said, hey, do you have, can you get access to $200,000? She'd be like, no. See, he had to drive her bit by bit because they don't know how to drive themselves. That's called leadership. You see, if you'd have asked her, she would have never conceived of being able to even get her hands on that kind of money. But once he put her to work, she got her hands on that money. He got her motivated, huh? But she could never motivate herself like that. That's why they need a P. You dig? Ooh, so much game. We're going to get into this. We are going to get into it. Shout out to Parker. He writes, do you think Japanese women are feminine? Yes, I, I think they're feminine and also deeply dysfunction and peculiar, especially if you're talking about those in Tokyo. Once you get out of major cities, you tend to find a higher quality of woman. Asian women in general are quite feminine, reasonably submissive. Uh, increasingly, they're exposed to popular media, so you have to deal with that. But yes, they're, they're quite feminine. All right. So, uh, what country did you like the fem femininity, femininity of their women? I, I love the femininity of the women in Ethiopia. <sighs> Amazing. Call me Swaggy P, writes, I just turned 20. My business is almost making 10K a month. Very good. After I scale my business to over 20K, would it be better to stay at home rent-free or move out and stay and start paying bills, bro. Come on. Are you serious, man? Get the fuck out of your house. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Come on. Live your life, bro. What is all this saving money stuff? I'm all about being thrifty. And in fact, I have a an episode you can buy. I think it's from Conference 3. It talks about personal finance, how to manage personal finance. But let me help you all because there's a lot of idiocy going around on social media. These dumb people who are broke are always on social media spreading their impoverished mindset, saying stupid things. I saw one goofball bastard popped up on Instagram back like maybe a week ago. And he says, you know, poor people, they'll buy brands like Gucci and Hermes. And you know, what happens if you buy like a Gucci jacket, you know, a month later, you can't sell that for any money. You just got a stupid jacket and you can't make any money off of it. But see, this is a Rolex watch. If I buy a Rolex watch for $7,000, I can turn around later and sell it for $9,000. It gains value. I was like, see, you broke bastard. You're broke as fuck. And I'll tell you why we know this guy's extraordinarily broke. You see, if you have money, and more importantly, you have money machines, which is to say consistent passive income, you don't need to buy something thinking about the resale value. You hear me? I buy things I don't care anything about the resale value. I'm not going to resell it. And when I'm done with it, I might just leave it where it is. You hear me? I got cars I ain't driven in a while. I just leave them parked. It's my car. I like it. When I want to drive it, I'll drive it. When I go to that city that the car's in, then I'll drive the car. If not, it'll just sit there. I don't need to sell it. I don't need to resell it. I don't need to put it on Toro. I don't need to rent it out. I can afford to have it and have it sit, okay? That's wealth. That's wealth. That's what the American system is about, overconsumption. I don't recommend overconsumption. It makes you sick, but you still have to have the ambition to overconsume this money. You dig? These are people without ambition and without real plans. You understand me? There are people who make thousands of dollars per minute. That's literal. That's a real thing. See Jeff Bezos as an example. There are billionaires out there, and you don't need to be a billionaire to, be, to have enough money to buy a designer and to buy a watch without having to think about reselling it. You just have to have a couple money machines that are consistent across different industries. This is idiotic thinking when someone's always talking about, oh, well, if you buy that, or what can you resell it for? You don't have to resell it. You hear me? Like, what, what is your plan to be broke in the near future? Is that your plan? Like, come on now, it's silliness. Anyways, so I say that to say this. Um, and that guy is all wrong. He's a total liar. He's, a, he's like, you know what? Elon Musk doesn't buy designer clothes. I was like, do you know Elon Musk? I didn't, I didn't know you knew Elon Musk. Do you know him? He's like, you know, Bill Gates doesn't buy designer clothes. Do, do you know Bill Gates? I didn't know you knew Bill Gates. See, you're, you're an idiot and a liar because you don't know what they're doing. 
You don't know if these guys have Parker ink pens that cost $500. You don't know what these guys spend money on. You don't know if Bill Gates has a mega yacht that costs $50 million that you can't resell at that price because there's not many people who can afford a mega yacht. So, and plus the people who can afford a mega yacht don't want a used mega yacht. Okay. So you have broke people saying idiotic things. And one thing I can guarantee you of having been around many wealthy people, they spend extraordinary amounts of money on ridiculous things like luggage, for example. Yes. I know wealthy people who have luggage that is more than most of you guys are making per month. Okay. So, and that's just luggage, my boy. So this is just idiotic talk from people who don't really make money. If you're listening to somebody tell you how to save money, um, and that's their primary program, ah, uh, like they're not winning in life. If that's where their orientation is. I love saving money. I, I'm very thrifty, but if I have time to talk to you, I'd rather talk to you about making money. Not that making money will solve all your problems because it won't, but I, I'd rather talk to you about making money. Cause Hey, guess what? You can figure out how to save money on your own, right? You've been broke before. Do what you did then. You know how to save money, but what you don't know how to do is to create money machines and make money consistently. That's where I specialize. That's where I can give you some real meaningful information instead of getting you into a poverty mindset and thinking like a loser and a person who's broke. And I tell you what, that guy was certainly lying when he said that uh, wealthy people don't spend money on designer. This is a lie. This is a total lie. In fact, you make a lot of contacts with uh, what you have and what you buy. You see, there's certain clubs that like, for example, I'm in a number of Rolls Royce clubs. You can't get in the club unless you got a Rolls Royce. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that everyone else in the club is wealthy. And that was the entrance ticket. OK, so, yes, your things that you buy matter and they get you into certain places. In addition to that, I've been out places and, you know, my old lady might have a certain kind of bag or a certain kind of you know, piece of crap that she wanted to buy. And then there's another woman there who also has that same piece of crap. And she's like, oh, I love your bag. Oh yeah, we have the same bag. Mine's in yellow, yours in green. So, you know, this woman has money. And then what happens? My old lady makes friends with her old lady. And then her old lady goes, oh, you have to meet my husband. Okay. This motherfucker's a baller. This motherfucker got $800 million. Okay, great. Fantastic. Thank you, Goyar for creating this overly expensive bag that my old lady got from Monaco and his old lady got in Milan and then they bonded over that and now I get to hang out with this dude who's 30 years older than me and richer than a bitch. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, these are true stories. Like th this is why people are talking about things that they don't have a foggy idea. They have no idea about it. It annoys me because I know they're lying. And furthermore, who wants to get and make all these advertisements on Instagram about dumb shit like, you know, you know, a real rich person wears a Rolex, bro, a Rolex. You make me in no disrespect to my homie. I got a couple of homies who love Rolexes. Shout out to the homie Gilbert. You hear me? He's been running, wearing Rolexes since we was teenagers. You hear me? The ball 19 with a Rolex, a real one. You dig? Shout out to them bosses. But I, a Rolex, my boy, like that's not even baller shit. My nigga, I got, I got I, I'm not even get into it, man. I'm not getting into it, but that's entry level shit right there, man. I don't give a fuck what DJ Vlad said. That's basic entry level shit. I wouldn't be caught dead in a Rolex personally, <laughs> me personally, because it's like you you think that you're you're flossing, but you're not flossing. You hear me? <laughs> Did you guys know that Walmart resell uh, sells uh, Rolexes? Yeah, Walmart is an authorized seller of Rolexes. This is a true story. I was on Facebook one day. I saw an advert, a Rolex advert from Walmart, and I was like. Yeah, no, I can't do it no more. I can't do it. Cannot do it. Anyways, carrying on. Shout out to uh, Barak. He writes, uh, sent to email, piece of saints. Uh, do you want me to read this out loud, saint? I I'm So let me know if you want me to read this out loud or just uh, check into this personally. Let me know. I'll give you a little bit of time to post that in the, the chat. He said, talk about them Richard Mills. You know, see, the thing about watch game to me, brethren, is I like watches that rappers don't talk about. You feel me? I don't want a watch that a rapper talks about. And here's why. By the time a rapper gets to it, it's not posh anymore. You dig? Nah, uh -uh. It's, not, it's not elite to me anymore. I need something that's posh and player. You dig? I need something that, that a few people know about. And most people are like, that's dope. What is that? You heard me? I like, I like my shoes to be like, what you call that? I like my outfit to be like, where'd you get that? I, I don't want any rappers to talk about the things that I have. Cause what are rappers? Rappers represent the black lower class. <laughs> Do I want to reflect the taste of the black lower class? Hell nah. 
I need to be posh, my boy. And I, I said this years ago that the coldest watch brand, in my opinion, is this one right here. This is the coldest watch brand. Like Richard Mill, stop it. If some rapper named Lil this or Lil that, Lil Zan, Lil Butt Crack, nah, like it's not cold anymore. It's not player. This is what what is real. This is a real watch right here. You dig? And just remember, the big homie was the first one to mention these years ago. Years ago. Now, this watch brand, this originated as a pocket watch. You dig? And these were pocket watches, and pocket watches are circular. And being that pocket watches are circular, when they started to make wrist watches, they made these watches circular to reflect the heritage of this watch uh, history. And these watches are made by hand in a castle, my boy. Yeah, there's the castle. They make these by hand. They literally have works of art within the watch. So someone uses a goddamn microscope uh, to paint the watch. These are insane, just beautiful pieces. Let's see. And here's the funny thing. When you listen to, to rappers and the things that the, the rappers buy, these Fulios, man, they can't even pronounce the names of the brands half the time. It's like, it's, it's pathetic, honestly. It really is. Let me just go to Google so you guys can see some of their watches. Oh, wait, did you guys want to see the prices, though? Yeah, there you go. Oh, no, that's not it. That's some scam malicious stuff. That's the scammy. So look at the three-dimensional nature, like the actual earth that they have embedded in that watch was hand-painted, and it's three-dimensional. It's spherical. They're gorgeous, gorgeous watches, just utterly beautiful timepieces. And these are insane on resale, but here's the thing. If you like the watch, why do you need to resell it? Keep it. Keep it. Wear it. Die in it. Pass it down to your kids or just throw it away when you're on your deathbed. Beautiful pieces. It's kind of reminiscent uh, of, in my opinion, of the, the uh, Mark Jacob aesthetic uh, 20 years ago. But the point is this. People with real taste and, and, and style and elegance and connection and experience, and they know what's really posh. Ain't nobody trying to wear a goddamn Rolex. Fuck out of here with that shit. And I damn sure ain't trying to wear nothing that I heard a rapper say in a song, especially if it's like a new young rapper. You dig? Like, please stop it. I don't like people to know what my stuff is. Like, yeah, like all this, like rapper talk, like, no, stop it. I'm not wearing a rapper watch. Please. It's beneath me. You dig? They can't even pronounce the names of the brands that they like. You hear me? <clears throat> like, for example, how many rappers you hear talk about a Maybach? The hell is a Maybach? It's not even how you pronounce the name of the car. You own the car. Can't even pronounce the goddamn name of it. It's low class, ladies and saints. I'm not going to lie. The Maybach is like the finest rear seat experience on earth. Uh, that's why I have one because the rear seat experience is extraordinary. It's much better than even the, um, even the Rolls Royce. He writes, you can address it here and redact some of it or in private just really requires some advice. Okay, for sure. Yeah, let's let's go. Let's let's take a look at what you sent in. All right, here we go. <clears throat> My mother was an abusive uh negligent nightmare growing up. I give her the benefit of the doubt and blame it on her traumas. Well, you know, honestly, you don't even have to do that. <laughs> you don't even have to, you know, try to explain it. It is what it is. If she was uh, abusive and negligent, that, that just is what it is. That's what, that was the reality of the matter. You don't have to explain it. I, you know, earlier today I heard someone, you know, I was listening to a true crime in the background. It was actually about some homosexual guys who were being uh, murdered. God's plan. Anyways, it was about some homosexual fellows who were being murdered. And the, uh, one of the guys who was murdered happened to be a prostitute, like a, a homosexual prostitute, which to me is crazy. I always thought the homosexuals were just like, you know, like they was just going after each other just indiscriminately. I didn't know it can't got down to the level where you need to pay for it as a homosexual. That's insane. I thought they were just, you know, you go to a gay club and pop a molly and it's just an orgy time. That's just how I assume they are. Uh, but anyway, I mean, just imagine they have standards. I mean, come on. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're putting your penis into a shithole. Like what kind of standards do you really have? Anyways, point is this. When the narrator was explaining um, 
why the guy uh, or how the kid ended up dying. He said, well, the serial killer, uh, you know, reached out to a prostitution hotline and this guy was a gay prostitute. He was also like a, a fill in the blank with a normal job, say like a, you know, a, a janitor, but he was also a prostitute to pay for his school. And I like, see, you didn't need to tell us that. You didn't, a prostitute is a prostitute. It doesn't matter if he's being a prostitute to pay for his school. The explanation doesn't matter. Let's just deal with what it is. He's a prostitute. All that extra shit. Nah, that's irrelevant. Which is to say, if your mother uh, was neglectful, or excuse me, uh, negligent and abusive, that's she was negligent and abusive. We don't even have to excuse it with why. We don't have to excuse it with, you know, maybe she was abused, maybe she was uh, experiencing negligent parents. We don't have to excuse it. it just is what it is. And we're going to cut it off there. Since a child, because I loved her so much, and that makes sense, your mother. And couldn't bear to see her suffer more in life. I unconsciously devoted myself to being her selfless surrogate son, husband, parent. Okay. And, you know, this often it's the mother that creates or enforces that dynamic of the son husband. He writes, while she always prioritizes her personal wants and goals. Now that's truly evil right there. Boy, that's some serious evil. Oh boy, that's some serious evil even to my detriment, treating me as an afterthought, she was self-absorbed and never recognized her impact on me or just didn't care. I still don't know which one it is. And here's, you know, here's the worst thing about it. You may never know. You know, one of the greatest experiences I had, one of the greatest experiences that I've ever had is figuring out that some questions you'll never know the answer to. That's number one, figuring out that some questions you will never know the answer to and making peace with that. As a human being, that is our existence on earth. Sometimes we will never know the actual answer to some things. That's number one. Then number two, my se the second thing that gave me peace is knowing that if I do get the answer, sometimes I won't be satisfied with it. Sometimes it's not a good answer. I remember one time I asked my mother, I said, you treat me so poorly. Why did you have me? Why did you have a kid if you didn't want to sign up to take on the true responsibility of raising a kid? Why did you have a kid? And then she actually told me the truth. And it was amazing because she told me the answer really quickly. And my mother almost never answers quickly because that's not the kind of brain that she has, right? So she answered quickly and clearly. And I was, I was shocked, but I wasn't satisfied or pleased with the answer. I was happy to get an answer. And I realized that sometimes the, the act, if you get the answer, if you're fortunate enough to get the answer, you won't feel any better about it. She said, and this is a, I believe her. She said, I had you, which is not to say me in particular, but I had a baby, right? Because I wanted something to love me. <laughs> I know as crazy as it sounds, I'm like, word, word, shorty. You had a baby, not so you could love the baby, but so the baby could love you. Like, damn, shorty, that that's serious levels of narcissism, self-absorption lunacy, um, loneliness, uh, lack of feeling love. It's just like, it's all bad, but stacked up on top of each other, right? It's, it's all bad, but it's stacked up. And you know, the worst thing about it, this is not unique. I remember when I was a teacher in Baltimore, and you can read a lot of this in my book, The Black Box. And I remember I met my mother. You're like, Mark, how did you meet your mother when you were a teacher in Baltimore? Well, I met my mother because I was teaching children. 11 year old girls and boys. And I, I, at least one time I met my mother. I was like, this little girl is my mother. This is how my mother was at her age, you know, uncared for, came to school not properly groomed. Parents were neglectful uh, or negligent, if you like. And um, the young lady was looking for love, she was looking for someone to love her, whether it's another little boy her age, whether it's a grown man. That's like a father figure or even even a, someone that would take advantage of her, someone to love her uh, or even a baby. And I had found a poem that this girl had left. I, I don't even know if I can say I found it. She left a poem on my desk and uh, the poem was called To Feel Unwanted. I believe it's in my book, The Black Box. And it was called To Feel Unwanted. And so it explained her feelings. And also it talked about um, how she wanted a baby to love her. I'll like, say, oh, this is my mother. <laughs> this is my mother. Here, here she is. It's not an uncommon uh, occurrence that, you know, females have this experience. Um, and so I say that to say this to you. Maybe your mother too, but 
Now, it, it occurs every now and then that uh, someone has kids for the wrong reasons. And, you know, you struggle and you're trying to get these answers uh, in life. Most times you won't get the answer. Sometimes you get the answer. It won't satisfy you. What is more important than that answer is accepting what is, because what is is clear and certain. So accepting what is and then deciding what to do based on what is. Okay, so I understand this thing, this real thing. Now, what am I going to do? Who am I going to be? Which of my characteristics am I going to showcase to deal with this? So I really want you to hyper-focus on that and, and focus on acceptance not struggling with why isn't she different? What happened to her? You'll never know. You'll never know. You, you were not there. Uh, she was self-absorbed and never recognized her impact on me or just didn't care. I still don't know which one it is. You'll never know. <laughs> Hell, here's the funny thing. She might not even know. That's the messed up part. She stayed with her genuinely abusive husband after years of me pleading and offering to help her leave but she still hasn't. You know, the funny thing is um, that's almost like a simp position. Now, obviously, you're the son. You want what's best for her. But imagine being another guy. Now, listen to this. Just break your brain on this with me. Imagine being another man who wanted to date your mother, right? Another man, your mother's age, single, and wanted to treat her right. If that man existed, say even if, say, you were that man and you wanted to treat her right, she wouldn't leave the abusive man to be with a good man. Huh? She wouldn't leave an abusive man to be with a good man. And that good man trying to take her away from the abusive man is indeed a simp. He's trying to get a woman who really doesn't want anything good in life to come be with him a good man so that he can be good to her. I say that to say this. Water seeks its level, which is to say birds of a feather flock together. That man who's beating her, there's something broken in him. He beats her as an expression of his sickness on the inside. Her on the inside, also sick. Huh? They are on the same level. They're a match. That's the problem. They are a match. You're trying to unmatch her. She's still sick. He's sick. They're a match. Not until she is not sick can she find another man who is maybe healthy or, or can she, is she willing to be with herself? You might ask yourself, do I want to get sick being around these folks who are meddling in their affairs? I tell you, all here's a true story. Ladies and saints, I don't know if I've told anyone this. I hope my mom's not listening. I try to make sure that my mother does not have much money. Personally, I go out of my way to make sure my mom doesn't have much money. Why? Because money can be dangerous to a personality like hers. My mother's a very kind, giving woman. If she has money, she's going to give it away to other people. She's going to get used, for, used by others around her for her money. Because my mother's around lower class people. So she has some money and she's a, around other lower class people. They're going to use her for the money. Or if she has the money, she's going to make bad decisions with it. Because here's the thing. You know, when you don't have a goal in life or, or you know, things that keep you busy, meaningful things, and you got, you got a bunch of extra money, what do you spend it on? Silly things. Silly things. Alcohol, drugs, uh, tobacco, cigarettes, vaping. You try out vaping just because you got the money, right? I smoke cigarettes. What's that? I'll buy that. Why not? So I try to make sure she doesn't have much money so she doesn't have many decisions to make. When you're in poverty, you don't have many decisions that you get to, you don't have choice. When you're wealthy, you do what you want to do. When you're poor, you do what you have to do. And I'd rather her be poor doing what she has to do so that she's kept busy and occupied with the, the basics of survival. If she ever gets beyond the basics of survival, she's going to have too much time to do too much thinking and, and too much decision making and the outcomes are going to be bad. And, and we've seen that consistently. So this is why a great man, a leader, you have to be able to think for yourself. You have to be able to manage your own emotions. Sometimes you got to be able to think for others and be able to manage their emotions and their affairs. But let me tell you this, young man, and this just is what it is. Sometimes you got to love them for, from a distance. And for those of you who might be experiencing uh, troubles with your family, there's a chapter in the black box and it closes out basically explaining you don't get to choose your family. Sometimes you expect that family means a certain thing. It means that your, your father is always there. It means that your mother always loves you. It means that your grandmother always wants to babysit you. It means that your cousins get you gifts on Christmas or on Eid. But that's what it's supposed to mean. 
That's not what it always means in reality. And it is those of us who can deal with reality who are going to get on in this world. And remember, uh, you can choose your family. You can, hell, you can create a family. You can choose who you spend time with and associate with. Make those decisions because I tell you the time is flying. The time is flying. Don't spend your time mourning. Spend your time building. Spend your time being around those who are giving you back the love that you seek. Next piece, he, or next paragraph, he writes, seeing her in this relationship and lifestyle broke me as a young boy. She says she's willing to leave him these days, but I don't trust her anymore. Yes, you can't ever love anyone more than they love themselves. Listen, no, real, real talk. You cannot love anyone more than they love themselves. You will suffer. We've all done it. We've all done it, especially those of you who are on this live session, because birds of a feather flock together. Most of you all are saintly in nature. You're good people. You've tried to love someone more than they love themselves. You're going to, oh man, you're going to get hurt. This is what I mean. Many times I've loved people more than they love themselves. I see a woman, oh, you're so beautiful. Why would you smoke cigarettes? You're so beautiful. You could, you smell terrible when you smoke cigarettes. A beautiful woman, does it make sense that you'd have such a beautiful face and then you smell like death? You're killing yourself. Slow suicide. Why would you do that to yourself? I love her more than she loves herself. Yes, you're going to hurt yourself when you love someone more than they love themselves. He writes, a couple months ago, I moved out. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> There's a win. And I don't interact as much because of that. Yeah, I might have just stopped interacting entirely. Just let her reach out to me. These days, I feel free, but now she wants to be more a more caring mom. I, I don't know if I trust it. I don't care anymore. She values me more than more that I'm now an adult more than when I was a kid and it makes me sick. Okay, well, here's the, okay, now you wildin', you wildin'. I'm gonna tell you why you wildin', my boy, because you're feeling angry. And anger, I remind, is a surface level emotion. You know, underneath anger, there's always more deep feeling, sadness, depression, disappointment, um, feeling like someone should have cared, uh, feeling unloved. You know, anger is a surface emotion. It's like you have all the, a well of emotions, all these different emotions. And ironically, they all bottleneck into anger because anger is the easy one to express. It's so hard to look at someone and tell them, you know, you hurt my feelings. This is how you hurt my feelings. Or to tell someone, you know, you made me sad or I feel sad because of like, then you got to get serious, you know, but just to be like, ah, you know, that's so easy to do, especially for males. For males, it's so easy to get mad. It's like a, it's an easy escape. It's a cop out. Don't do that. Now. Okay. So uh, when you say I'm an adult, uh, she values me more that I'm now an adult more than when I was a kid. And that makes me sick. Well, see, again, you don't know that actually, you don't know how much she did or did not value you as a child. You just know what you perceived. You don't know what's in her head. Like, for example, I have a woman who tells me, you don't love me. You want to be with other women. You don't know how I feel. You have no idea how I feel. How is it that I would sacri sacrifice my life for yours if I don't love you? Just because I'd like to, you know, poke my penis into this other woman's vagina. That doesn't mean I don't love you. You don't know what I feel in here. You don't know what I feel in here. So don't speculate on something you cannot know. This is something you cannot know, right? <laughs> like you're telling, you're claiming that you know something you cannot know. I'm not saying you're wrong. You might be right, but you cannot know. So you're speculating in the absence of true knowledge and it's making you mad. It's pissing you off. Now, don't do that to yourself. You know, it's funny how she cares more about adults than kids. We don't know. She also might not care about the adults. It might be lip service. She might not care about the kids. She might not care about the adults. She might just be doing this. You ever met anyone who lies? You ever met anyone who pretends to care? She might not care about either, or she might have cared about both, or you could be right. She just cares about you as an adult, not as a kid, or hell, maybe she just cared about you as a kid, not as an adult. Now she's just playing, saying it. Maybe she actually needs something from you. Maybe she needs to borrow some money. And maybe you actually get on the phone with a returner call and she's acting all nice. And then she says, Hey, can I borrow $2,000? You don't know. But here's the most important thing. Increasingly, it doesn't matter. I want you. I want you to hang up on what I'm about to say. I want you to get stuck on what I'm about to say. I really do. I want you to get stuck on this. I want all you guys to get stuck on this, especially you men. It doesn't matter anymore. Why? 
You're a grown man living on your own. Listen to me. All that shit, it doesn't matter anymore. You're a grown man living on your motherfucking own right now. You don't get to be a kid again. You once were a kid. You no longer are a kid. Here's the, here's the kicker. You can go out and make kids of your own. You can create a family of your own. You're, you're closer to being a father than a son at this point, okay? That being the case, all that bad shit that happened to you, hell, all the good shit that happened to you, none of it matters. Get over it. Get over it and stop wallowing in it because you live on your own now. You're a grown man now, okay? I really mean that. And this is, you know, I'm saying this to you. I'm also saying this to me. I'm saying it to you. I'm also saying it to me. Come on now. Work with me. Work with me. Work with me here, saints. Carrying on. So uh, he further writes, I don't care about her anymore. Bro, you lying. Bro, you lying. Listen, you lying. <laughs> Shit, you lying, man. We all know you lied. That's okay, though. That's okay, though. Uh, for now. He writes, it's just that I feel guilty when I feel like that even though I've done nothing wrong. You know, it's not about not caring about someone. You can care about someone and not deal with them. You feel me? Like you could care with, about someone and not mess with them. You dig? Like I have a friend I grew up with. I mean, literally, like we've been in life and death situations together. And, uh, you know, he apparently got locked up too many times. I don't know what happened to him, but, you know, he ended up guzzling some Skittles. Brody ended up guzzling some Skittles. I can't mess with him. I still love him. I still love him, but I can't mess with him. It gets like that. You know, you don't have to say that you don't care about her. You Maybe you still do care, but that doesn't mean you got to mess with her. You got to deal with her. You have to get involved in her mental issues or in, in the negative dynamic that she creates. He writes, when I see her, the only thing that fills my mind is rage. See, bro, that's what I was talking about. Shit like that. That anger, yeah, you got to let that go. That's going to hurt you. That's not going to hurt her. It's going to hurt you. Let that go. Promise you. Um, about how she neglected me. You know what? I'm going to tell you. I've met you. I've met you. I've shook your hand. I've spent time with you. I've listened to you. You're a very sincere gentleman. And, you know, I'm very proud of you. And I tell you what, this is what you got to know. At the end of the day, bruh, whatever you went through was not that bad. And you're like, damn, quit. how are you going to tell that man? That? I know. And I'm going to tell you why I know. Because as good as you've come out, as emotionally developed as you have been, I say this from meeting you and talking to you, as intelligent, as accomplished as you are, shit apparently wasn't that bad. I say the same thing about my childhood, right? You know, like grew up, dad in prison, mom on dope, mom dipping out, uh, lived in a violent ghetto. And look, things turned out pretty well. So all in all, either shit wasn't that bad or I'm the hardest motherfucker on earth. I don't know which one it is, but it doesn't really matter. Things worked out in the end. And look, sometimes you have hangups. And you either, you got to decide to do something with it. Like recently I was experiencing a hangup. I was talking to this young lady and she was telling me how when she was a child, her parents would make her do all this stuff. Oh, make me go to dance classes and make me play instruments and make me do that. And I didn't want to do any of it. And I was listening to her and I was bothered because I was the opposite. I never got offered to do anything really. I was poor and my mom was gone and my dad was in prison. So no one was trying to get me to do anything. Anytime someone said, hey, do this, youngster. I was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I would do it hard. You hear me? Like I would work hard at it. I would either I was a natural at it. And if I wasn't a natural, I would work my butt off until I was top of the class at whatever it was. If someone gave me something to do as an adult, giving me a chance and an opportunity. And I was listening to her like, oh, word, your parents put you in dance classes. You didn't want to dance. They put you in a uh, piano class and you was too lazy to do it. And you didn't practice like, wow, I wanted to play piano when I was a kid. I was too poor. You actually have to have money. I don't know how it is now, but if you want to play violin, piano, drums, you got to have to pay to do that at the public school. I didn't have any money to do it. So what did I do after I heard that story? I was listening to her thinking, damn, it's crazy. If I got lazy kids, I'm going to let them motherfuckers be lazy. I ain't forcing them to do shit. The motherfuckers want to be lazy. I'm going to let them be lazy, yo. Because you can't heal stupid and you can't heal lazy. You know, if I just happen to have lazy, stupid kids, I'm just have to let them be. But this is what I did. Instead of getting mad at that, you know what I said? I said, I always wanted to play piano. You know what I did this weekend? I scheduled a piano class. Now, granted, I, I think I could have really been super nice with the piano game, you dig? 
you know, if I'd have started as a kid, like I wanted to, like everyone else would, who had good middle-class parents, I didn't get that opportunity. I'm not going to cry about it. what I do? I scheduled a piano lesson because I can afford to do that and I have the time and I can make the time to do it. So I got a piano lesson uh, coming actually tomorrow. I got a piano lesson tomorrow evening. Uh, after I, I got a dentist appointment, only two things I have to do tomorrow, I have a dental appointment and then I have a piano class. So I schedule that. That's something I didn't get to do as a child because I was a poor kid with shitty parents. And now I'm going to go do that. And there's no need to get at my angry at my mom or circumstances or poverty. You schedule the piano class. You go do something you always wanted to do. That's just what it is. It's just, that's what life was, bro. That's just how it turned out. I didn't get to do it then. I'm going to do it now. Uh, he writes, uh, continually, she continually chose her husband over me and took help, took my help for granted. Yeah, that, that's how people are. And you know, the funny thing is that you're describing is that, you know, this is a dynamic between male, female that, you know, you, you experienced on the side of parent child, but also can be experienced on the side of, um, in, in romance as well. You know, sometimes people will have unrequited love and romance as well as family, you know, and, and sadly such is life. He writes, I don't know what to do anymore, Saint. Well, you ain't got to do much. You, you don't live with her, right? You don't live with her and you don't have to be in, engaged with her. You can let her live her life. She is indeed an adult. And I, I trust perhaps at some level she's happy that you're an adult and you're moved out. So she doesn't have to deal with you either. He writes, I feel like offing her husband. Bruh, goddamn, bruh. Now, listen, let me tell you. Um, uh, I probably shouldn't have read that part. I apologize. Uh, man, you got to redline this shit for me next time, bruh. You got to redline this shit for me. Um, check this out. It would make sense if she'd been trying to escape her husband. Then I say, yeah, go ahead. You know, do what you got to do. If she had been trying to escape him, right? Huh? Because then it's like, he's just a bad guy all around. But she's not trying to escape him. They're mad. They're mates. They're mates. So that's not your affair, right? If she's not trying to escape him, that's not your affair. Whereas because I feel like he stole my mom from me. Now, he ain't steal her. No, he ain't steal her. She did that willingly. I mean, according to what I'm reading, I wasn't there, but according to what I'm reading, it sounds like she willingly participates in this dynamic. He writes, but I don't even know if I had a mom in the first place. Well, let's put the modifier on. I don't know if I had a good mom, right? I don't know if I had a good mom. You had a mom. She just might not have been a good mom. And here's the thing. There's levels to all things. You hear me? There's people who are beat down Toyotas. There are people who are Rolls Royce. You hear me? Brand new with the leather seats stitched. <laughs> you dig? You know, with the with the piping, two-tone. You dig? So there are levels to things. There's levels to the quality of parents, quality of cars, quality of women, quality of relationships, quality of materials. Everything has levels. You did have a mom. You just had a shitty one. <laughs> shit. You heard me? He's just all there is to it. Yeah, the mom. She's just shitty. Uh, cause and the reason I have to say that respectfully is because um some people don't have moms. Listen to me. And that sucks. The reason I gotta tell you, remind you, you had a mom, bro. Some people do not have moms. And that sucks even more because you know, uh not even being able to argue at your mom because she ain't there, she never was there, and wondering. Why didn't you want me? That hurts. Okay. I think people who never had a mom, in many cases, they might have rather had a bad mom than no mom, especially if they grew up in the uh the the system, so to speak, you know, group homes, adoption agencies, things like that. My mother used to work for these folks, and they're just horrible stories she would recount. A lot of these kids suffer uh, sexual abuse and much else because they're in group homes. There's no one watching over them. There's these random people who are getting like low wages who are abusing these kids. And the kids are also abusing each other. It's a terrible, terrible way to live. So I want you to understand that you had a mom. You just did not have a great one. Okay. Like my cousin, Anthony, for example, his mom was lovely. And I always like, damn, I want a mom like that. You know, the homie crazy Rob, I used to think I wanted a mom like his, but when I became, cause his mom was always so down. You heard me crazy. Rob could do the most ridiculous crime and his mom would defend him. I said, I want a mom like that. Cause my mom would never defend me even when I was innocent. Um, but I realized in my maturity that crazy moms, crazy Rob's mom, obviously maybe was not the best mom to have. I mean, look at his outcomes. Anyways. Uh, he writes, I don't want to deal with this BS anymore, Saint. 
Either I'm going to off him or cut her off forever. Well, it sounds like you're going to cut her off, my boy. That sounds like the way. And honestly, I keep it funky with you. And honestly, you could tell, look, I ain't tripping over, you know, catching a little small case off of something I say on YouTube, apparently. Because if it was time to catch that body, I, I would give you an indication that you should go ahead and catch that body. If it is true that she has not been trying to escape, that's not a body. That's not a body. Let that man live. She is participating in that. So it sounds like you need to cut her off. He writes, I just can't bear the same BS situation my whole life any longer. Peace of the saints. I need to heal and move on. Correct and correct. So go ahead and cut that relationship. Settled. Let that be the end of it for all time. May I acknowledge Perry. He writes, the big homie, peace of the saints. Now also shout to Orion. He came in with the cash app. He writes, peace of the saints from the stoner family. Shout out to the stoners. You dig? Uh, shout out to the whole nation out there. Uh, truly appreciate it. Always good to see you guys. Had the pleasure of meeting the stoners some time ago. A very good gentleman. Anyways, um, you know, I, I wanted to take out time to honor that because I met I met this young man, very impressive young man, good guy. And so there's nothing worse than a good person suffering, you know. And also, if we should suffer, let us suffer because of circumstance, things beyond our control. Don't make yourself suffer. Be good to good people. Oh, oh yeah, this part, be good to yourself. Yeah, don't forget that. See, a lot of the saints have had the pleasure of meeting him. So people already know what kind of guy he is. Super solid. Good, good brother. Good brother. Absolutely. Okay, let's see. I want to make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh, yeah, but, bro, like, call me Swaggy P. Bro, you better move out your house and quit bullshit. Like, for real, for real. I just had to say that twice. <laughs> Vlog writes, thank you for sharing transparently. I would want to make the most of your time. I'm traveling next month to look at the land. Very good. And educate myself on the business itself. I don't know if the land has anything to do with your business, but buying land is a very serious pursuit. And I kid you not, I really would suggest that you spend as much time as possible on that land, surveying the land. I don't know if you're going to need to use it for, you know, um, agricultural purposes for manufacturing or what have you. But if you need significant electricity on there, you need to see if it's coming pre-piped and, you know, like what's already there. Uh, certain states will have the land prepped and certain states tend to not have the land prepped. Um, also, look at those property lines. I talked to the neighbors and asked them, well, well, what do you think? Where do you think your property line ends? I talked to all of the neighbors. This is in addition to having the land surveyed because what happens sometimes is the land will get surveyed and the survey will say your property line is from here all the way to here, right? And then you talk to the neighbors and they think their property line is over here. The law doesn't matter. You know, what, what the surveyor says and what the fact of the matter is, is not going to impact your neighbor's attitude if they have a bad attitude and they're convinced that their property line is onto your property. So you want to talk to those neighbors and make sure because uh, this is a real thing. It, it can be seriously problematic. I really want you to do your due diligence when buying land and property in general. Um, and what else? There's one other major thing uh, with re regards to property. Yeah, um, natural weather systems. I look at all the natural weather systems passing through that particular land and particularly flooding. And, you know, there's just so many things you want to consider uh, when you're buying land. So I'm wishing you much success and to, you know, really uh, involve smart people who are experienced and, and talk to those neighbors. That can save you so much time, heartache, and headache. Right, so I will be booking. Okay, very good. Good luck. Shout out to the ballers. Shout out to Preston writes great topics and discussion. I don't know if he's talking about the actual topic or uh, the more recent one, but shout out to Preston. That's one of the, the long time loyal saints. Preston was just on my mind recently. Um, so he's been with us for, for a cool minute. Preston actually helped us put on the very first conference, like conference one. Hey, do you ever hear me reference conference one? Hey, that man helped me put on conference one, hey, conference uno, bro. That was crazy. This was way back in the day. May I acknowledge uh, Gwensley? He writes, how does one let go of that anger? How do you achieve that if that anger is a core part of you? Well, that's the thing. The anger is not a core part of you. <laughs> Were you an angry ass baby? <laughs> you were a mad ass babies? Nah, bro. The anger is not a core part of you. It is an enlightenment and in understanding that we're able to release certain things. Like, for example, the N-word with the hard R generally gets black people angry. Uh, 
I remember I was programmed in the same way, but I haven't gotten mad at the N-word since I was like uh, nine years old or something, uh, something like that. And it's because I, I received enlightenment and knowledge. And in my book, The Black Box, you can read about the conversation that I had about this particular word. And then, you know, following that, I, I just found it to be a word that is intended to be offensive that, you know, I could use, I could have used on me. And you decide how you react based on how you really feel. And I really feel nothing. You know, someone, you're a, I don't feel anything. I'm like, damn, are you talking to me? Oh, you're talking to me. Oh, okay. For sure. For sure. I understand what you intend, but I don't, I don't feel that way. So Anger, similarly, is, as I said, a surface emotion. There are things underlying it. If you can discover what underlies it and then get some, do some introspection on those real feelings, then you can deal with this. But uh, it sounds as though a lot of people are angry. But you know what I find is that very few people are angry. And, you know, one of the greatest ways to, like, or maybe the most theatrical ways to see uh, how surface and weak and flimsy and emotion anger is, is watch. I remember I had watched this thing called street beefs a while back. They don't really do it in the way that they used to. Street beefs is a kind of like a backyard boxing thing. They used to have two individuals who have real beef. That's why it was called street beefs. And they would go in the backyard and they would start fighting one another with boxing gloves on, but most people don't fight. Right. And so as soon as, and they'd be angry, I'm talking about real beefs, beefs that could lead to homicide, but instead they decide to put the guns up and put the gloves up. And as soon as they start fighting within maybe about 40 seconds, they were both uh, exhausted. So exhausted that even their anger itself had dissipated and disappeared. It's like, whoa, you were so angry. Like just mere exhaustion has removed your anger. You hated this guy. Now you're too tired to hate him. Whoa, that was a, was a very surface level uh, uh, emotion you were experiencing there. So often um, it's a matter of if we don't have a lot going on in our life that is good, well, it gets filled with bad. Bad is so much easier. It's easier to be fat than it is to be fit. In the absence of meaningful goals, excitement, and pushing your life forward, you might end up in a rut. In Boston University, there is a particular uh, lesson. It is called getting out of a rut. The lesson's called getting out of a rut. Why did I put that there? Because this is what we will experience in our lives in a recurrent fashion. Ruts. You get somewhere, you get stuck. Sometimes you get stuck at the top, you know, like toward the top and you're higher than most people, but it's still not acceptable because you're stuck. The nature of a good life is ever improving situation, ever moving. You can't stop. You can't slow down. When you stop growing, you start dying. That is the nature. You must keep going. You must figure out what the next level is. Everything wears off. If I get a Lamborghini today, that's exciting. Same Lamborghini two years from now. Ah, that's not that exciting. I get a Bugatti. What color is your Bugatti? I got a Bugatti today. It's green. Four years later, uh, who cares? I don't even drive it. You see, it's not exciting anymore. That's the nature of life. You have to keep moving. The next thing, next big thing. That's what life is about. What's the next big thing? Yes, that's the true story of life. What's the next big thing? That's why capitalism is such a powerful system because it's based on human nature. What is the nature of man? To consume, to be greedy, to want more, to have insatiable appetites? to be dissatisfied? Do you think anyone is truly productive when they're satisfied? Hell no. You're the most productive when there's something you want. When you think you got everything and you in, you encounter those moments, man, I could think of a, at least 10 moments when I was just laid up like everything's perfect. Don't nobody breathe. Don't nobody move. Everything's perfect and right with the world. I remember the first time I went to Dubai. First time I went to Dubai, I was in the Palm Jumeirah Beach residence. This is many years before YouTube, many years. I went to Dubai. I remember I went into the uh, clothier, had a suit made. This is before Dubai was like ultra popular among thoughts. This is before Instagram. You heard me? So like only people who had been there really knew. I went to Dubai and I went and had a suit handmade from scratch with my uh, who, guy who became my tailor, Sanjay gay Indian dude, cool cat, became my tailor for many years. My first time, we made something really cool. 
Then after that, I went to the beach. I got in the water. I don't really go into the beaches, but the water there is unique. It's, you know, Gulf water and it's, uh, it's warm like a bathtub. I love warm water. So I get in the water. It's warm like a bathtub. The water's cool and calm. I end up catching this French chick, game her up, go back to the high rise. You heard me? That looks out at the Palm Jumeirah, which is gorgeous. High rise, beautiful. Max her out. She talking to me in French while I'm blowing her back out. Skeet, 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 skeet. I'm laid out like this. Nobody move, nobody do anything. Life is perfect. Life is perfect. I'm in a high rise in Dubai. I had a suit made, handmade from scratch to my body's dimensions. I just went for a swim in the warm water. It felt great. Just maxed out this French girl. I don't know what she was saying while I was doing it, but it sounded phenomenal. And the vagina quality. And I'm in that perfect state where I'm, I don't really have much energy, but I'm not sleepy. I'm just enjoying. No one do anything. I'm not getting up. I'm not hungry. I don't need to use a restroom. Nothing. Everything's perfect. Don't let the world move from here. Freeze everything right here. It gets like that. Now, if you, nigga, you could have ran in there. The building's burning down. I think I'd have just probably laid there for two more minutes with my dick out. You heard me later for two more minutes with my dick out. Hey, bitch, don't move. Stay right there. You're part of the scene. You're part of the scene. You're a main character in this. Stay right there. Point is this. If you would have like came in there like, Mark, I have a great business opportunity for you. I'd have been like, right now though? Like, damn, like the business opportunity like is right right now? People who are just extraordinarily happy and content, man, they're not trying to move fast. They're not trying to do like all this extra stuff. It's those moments of discontentment that really keep you moving to the next level if we being real. And those of us who are greatest, we figure out how to take our disappointments and channel that for productivity. You see, the guy who's ultra rich, it's never the, the good looking guy. It's the guy who like builds the most impressive company. It's not the tall, strong, good looking guy who was born into a rich family. Never is it that guy. Let's be honest. Why? Look at Jeff Bezos. I'm going to show you a picture of Jeff, Be Jeff Bezos. And I'm going to tell you why these are the guys who make the most money. Because he's experienced certain kinds of disappointments that have made him drive ruthlessly to achieve money, fame, and power so he can stop being disappointed in certain ways. And the primary way he was disappointed was with women. Yes, Freud was right. Much of what drives us is sex. Jeff Bezos has an actual lazy eye or a big eye. I don't know what the hell the situation is, but he has an eye issue for sure. And he has massive ears and massive nose, not a good looking guy. He was not like, bagging the hose. And this is after he's rich. This is the I'm rich and I can do whatever it takes to improve my appearance. Jeff Bezos. You dig? Man has an eye. I don't know if he has a fake eye or what the hell the issue is with Brody's eye. I don't know what it is, but it, it's the Jeff Bezos. And I mean, look at the other rich guys. The all, We're not talking about rich people. We're talking about ultra rich people. Okay. Uh, what's the other dude? Bill Gates. Look at these guys. Come on. And we could even go and find the young Bill Gates. Y'all like Marquette, he's old. Okay, okay, young Bill Gates. Y you think this guy was taking him down? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Come on. And, and real quick, just while we're at it, let's look at Elon Musk because you guys don't know. See, I was in tech, so I remember Elon Musk. I, kn I know who Elon Musk really is. Yeah, I know who Elon Musk really is. Yeah, look at that. That's Elon Musk. That's poor. Actually, that's not poor Elon Musk. He was still rich right here, but that's young Elon Musk. Look at that hair. Yeah, that man spent $30,000 on hair implants. Yeah, look at, yeah, he he's had a number of things done. <laughs> Believe that. Big difference. Oh, there you go. Look at that difference. <laughs> the, the wonders of money. The wonders of money. Amazing, huh? Yeah, how do you look better when you're older? That's called money. Man, at 22, this boy looks spooky as hell. This boy, Elon Musk, look like he got four hoes tied up in his basement torturing the shit out of them. This nigga got four hoes in his basement playing them red pill YouTube videos while he tortures them. This motherfucker right here is all bad. Now, let me teach you, let me teach you guys something. 
there's a reason the guy who looked like that in his prime, like this is the nigga's prime. You, this Elon Musk on the left, that's his prime. You hear me? There's a reason he's driven. Now it's funny as hell to us, but it's just the truth. There's a reason he's driven. Bill Gates, uh, Warren Buffett, uh, Elon Musk. These dudes are dweebs, nerds, unattractive, unappealing to women and experiencing tremendous levels of rejection and asking themselves, well, what can I do to be able to have my pick, be able to have my choice, be able to reject them, say I'm better than you, go get a bag. And that's what they did obsessively. Drake could, you could tell the same story with Drake. <laughs> Come on now. When you actually look at his features, he's not good looking. You look at his features, he's not good looking. And then you listen to his music. What is it? Compl it's a, you go back and listen to his older music. It's a series of complaints about women. Heartbreak. That's what his albums are about, heartbreak. Come on now. So what I'm teaching you all is that those of us who are greatest and productive, you can take your heartbreaks, your heart aches, you can take your disappointments and utilize that for fuel. The guy who's living a good life and was favored this is not going to be the guy that's about to be super ambitious and successful because you have too many of those moments that I described to you where you lay back butt ass naked next to a French chick that's tanned beautifully golden crisp like she Moroccan, but she really French, though. You heard me? But naked than just rocked your world in the high rise. You could see the beautiful view. Like you got too many of them moments to work hard. Nigga, what you're working hard for? Let's be real here. Them motherfuckers is working hard so they can get their choice of hoes. I got my choice. It's right here. <laughs> you hear me? I'm experiencing my choice. I'm having it my way. What, what I'm working hard for. See, I can't work too hard. I got to deal with these girls. You dig? This is why niggas get the money for this right year. I already got it. Let me chill. You see? I just want you guys to understand that. That's the truth of human life. And let me tell you guys something else that you didn't ask me. Huh? Let me tell you something else you ain't asked me. Marquette, why is it the good-looking women are idiots and have no personality, no competence, and don't know how to serve? Because they didn't need to. Because <laughs> they didn't need to. Because these simps, losers, and dummies will treat them well based on their looks. So they never had to develop the other aspects of their personality. That's why good-looking women are woefully incompetent. I, I experience this all the time. No, Frank, it, it's not... Uh, it is live. It's not pre-recorded. I know nobody's super chatting, so it seems like it's pre-recorded. No, it actually is live. Um, but I've experienced these beautiful women all the time because I'm the guy that they're naturally attracted to. Now, they might end up airing, uh, marrying Elon Musk or marrying a, you know Bill Gates or whomever, but I'm the guy that took their virginity. That's me. I took the virginity because I'm the one they're naturally attracted to. And you hear me? And I was stroking them out like way back when. You hear me? And disrespecting them because they deserve it. So the point is this, the most beautiful women are not worth marrying. They're not worth marrying. They have no soul. They're not good people. They're dirt bags. And that's why so often you encounter gorgeous women, single mothers, single mothers. When I look on Instagram and I see the women that are like fine and thick, 30 plus single mothers, shocker, shocker. They don't have the decency to, to be retained in a relationship. They have bad attitudes and they're selfish. You'll, you'll never find a woman who's a dime piece and intelligent and has a good personality and wants to be service oriented. It just doesn't exist. They've had no incentive to develop those good traits because there's some nerd like Elon Musk or uh, Jeff Bezos who will give them the world because they always wanted that girl. They'll give her the world, but they give her the world for free. They don't make her work. You heard me, the, the real P, I'm going to make you work, baby. Yeah, yeah. And so what happens is the they'll let me hit, but they don't want to follow my program, so they'll go find the Elon Musk, and, and they'll live like that. Uh, Saints, I'll give you a little bit of time to support the work because the ism has been tremendo. I'll let y'all catch up with it. You dig? I know sometimes people just be astounded. Like, let me listen to this ism.
Uh, shout out to Frank. Comes in via Cash App. He writes, question from Frank H. in the chat. Which appears to be this question here. Is this live or pre-recorded? It is, it is live. <laughs> okay, maybe it was this one. All right. Uh, piece, of, piece of the Saints, Marquette. My father has a business set for me. And I struggle thinking about making my own way as well. Am I thinking egotistically? I don't know if I'd say egotistically, but you're definitely thinking bourgeois. That's for damn sure. That's some bourgeois shit. You know, he got he got everything laid out for you. Like, but I want to do it myself. <laughs> I tell you, if your ass was broke, if your ass was lower class, you grew up in poverty, your ass wouldn't even be asking me this question. But hey, man, uh, everybody has to operate from their own position. So it's not egotistic, uh, egotistical. It's for sure bourgeois. But check this out. Um, you're a grown man and you get to make your own way. I will uh, record, uh, recount to you that there was one young man, uh, I believe Haitian kid in, in Florida, and his father uh, was offering him a, an HVAC business, basically circling around the air conditioning industry. He didn't take it. His father retires. And then a couple of years later, he's reaching out to me. Hey, Mark, what, I want to start this business back up that my father had done. Well, now you're two years behind. You don't have inventory. You have to start from scratch. Seems like he regretted it. Uh, one thing I would ask you, Frank, being realistic is, you know, did you honor your own intention to make your own business by being prepared? So now your father's offering you the business. Well, question is, what is your age and what is your current business prospect or business opportunity? So, yeah, making your own way is cool. But do you have a way? You know, if you're like, hey, Quet, I, I got this other business I want to do. It's this is the product. You know, here's the lead transaction. Then I'm like, yeah, let's rock with it. We can do this. But if you don't have any particular passion, skill set, or plan, then it's like, bro, you, you sound dumb as fuck right now. Okay. So really, I want to know the answer to that question is what other business, what is your age, number one? And number two, what other business are you looking at doing right now? And also, no, you are in what's called a privileged position. People use the term privilege all, all the time. Uh, thoughtlessly, white privilege and you know, straight privilege. Like, man, get the fuck out of here with that shit. Listen, you're privileged, okay? This is the privilege. Somebody can hand you off a business, okay? Uh, so tell me, because I'm looking out, because I want to know, what is your age and what business do you have currently ready to go? Let, let's, take, let's take a look at it. Shout out to Kyrie, Sins Intuition, supporting the work. Appreciate you. Okay, looks like uh, everyone has had enough. So I will provide some time because I just want to hear this answer that I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Give him some time because I want, I want to personally know the answer to this question and then I'm outro. Oh, so I have a meeting in the morning tomorrow. I didn't, didn't realize that. Okay, so I have three required meetings tomorrow. Oh, by the way, Saints, um, I am going to create a document for you all. I do have on Friday the uh, open invite uh, to Rolo Tomasi, uh, debate invite. Uh, we all know he is aware of this. Uh, and uh, so we'll see if he would like to accept the invitation. I've also DM'd him the link to join on. So he has all of the needed information. If anyone has the uh, any videos, URLs uh, regarding Rolo that we should take a look at, please do send those in. I'll make sure to create a, a document. You can uh, send those to. Shout out to Fact Frenzy. He writes, what do you do if you found yourself in a situation uh, where you've been giving the world to a single or mom and realize you're wasting your time and set yourself back. I make six figures. I don't know if that's a typo. Did you mean you've been giving the world to a single mom? Is that what you mean? You've been giving the world to a single mom and you realize you're wasting your time and set yourself back. Well, all you can do is uh, withdraw as quickly as possible. So that's my recommendation is get out of there. And you know, the challenge is that women are really masters of emotional manipulation 
And we think that we're in the strong position because we have physical strength. But in the context of the civilized world, physical strength rarely comes into play, whether it's against women or against other men. And so those who would master emotional manipulation, influence, or control are really the masters of the society. And as far as I'm seeing it, women are often, you know, really winning. So she'll make you feel guilty. She'll make you want to stay. She'll make you feel connected to her and that child that's not even yours. But it is your responsibility to do what is best for you. And you said you set yourself back. So get out of there like it's a burning building. And if you cannot do that, the very least that you can do for yourself is to start to take step by step uh, the actions to get out of there. And I really do want that for you. I want the best for you. And you should want the best for yourself. He writes, I'm 23, Saint, and I have only attempted to learn about product-based businesses. I know I should be joining my father because the business is recession-proof in water remediation and mold treatment. Okay, so here's, um, here's the fact of the matter. So you're age 23. In the United States of America, and I'm presuming you're in America, correct me if I'm wrong, in the United States of America, a bachelor's degree is the typical thing that's recommended to us. We graduate university at 22 if we're doing the standard thing, which is to complete a four-year degree in four years. So you're one year out of university. Um, you didn't state what your job is or if you have a product that's going right now. So presumably you don't. He writes, I have only attempted to learn about product-based business. Okay. Well, that's a good start. Uh, learning is a good start, but doing is better. So I'd say if you don't want to do what your father is doing, you you need to really, <laughs> God damn it, get going. You know. You need to be going fast forward because you're you should be seeking to figure out can I do something well apart from what my my father is offering that's easy to do and profitable. So if I were you, I'd really start going a lot faster. Whereas I know I should be joining my father because it's a recession proof business. Yeah. And if you get a good business and you set up good business systems, then that empowers you to be able to do other things. So I, I don't see a lot wrong with it, but if you if you'd like to talk through some of the specific details of your situation, you know, let's have a conversation. Um, you know, it might be worth doing. Uh, you can book a consultation at cozycal.com slash SAS and SASN. Um, but at the very least, uh, if you decide not to get a consultation, take this advice. Move faster. Move faster and more seriously at the very least. I acknowledge Perry. He writes, could you leave this banger up for a few, Saint? <laughs> uh, shout out to uh, Mr. Davis. He writes, you are appreciated. Keep going. <laughs> Vezze, keep going. Vezze, keep going. I don't think they're ready for that, Saint. I don't think they're ready for that right now. Shout out to CJ supporting the work. Saints, it has been a pleasure to have this time to fellowship with you. Let us end this with our tradition, the creed of the Sasson. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you. The creed of the Sasson. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I am going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace of the saints.